In this video, we're going to be looking at performing some probability calculations on hypergeometric distributions. So in this section, in this video, I'm going to assume that you have a TI Inspire with the HGO PDF and HGO CDF functions uh, programmed in that we described in an earlier video, or that you have a TI 83 or 84 with the HGO CDF program that I showed you how in the previous uh, program to pre previous video to get programmed in. You could of course also do there's ways to do these in Excel. There's ways to do these in some statistical programs, but this uh, this one is assuming that you have the uh, TI calculator technology that we programmed into it. Okay, so here are a series of problems. Uh, with hypergeometric distributions. So remember at hypergeometric distributions you need to know the population size which we're normally going to call capital N and we have some different examples. Uh, we have the no total number of successes in the population. Of course that has to be less M but has to be less than or equal to N. You have the sample size which is lowercase n. The probability of a success on the first trial is P the mean is mu, the standard deviation is sigma, so we can figure out those parameters for the distribution. And then we can figure some probabilities. The first one is a probability that x equals 5. The next one is a probability that x is less than 6. The next one is the probability that x is greater than 9. And the last one is the probability that x is between 3 and 7 inclusive. 3 is less than or equal to x, which is in turn less than or equal to 7. So four probability calculations, as well as the three parameters to compute. Now, what? I, so each line of this is a separate problem with several different parts. So what I'd like you to do is work on this. Okay. So we're actually going to work through this one at a time. So the first thing it is to remember is the probability of success on the first trial is just capital M divided by capital N. That is the number of successes in the po population divided by the population size, that is the proportion of successes in the total population, which is P, which is M over N. So that's pretty easy to compute that, with, especially with a calculator, just divide. The mean, mu, turns out to be just little n times P. So once you found P, you're just multiplying N and P together for that. So that's the same formula we had for the mean of a binomial distribution. Now standard deviation is a little bit harder formula. If it were binomial, it would be the square root of NPQ. But if the hypergeometric, we also have this other fraction term right here, this fraction factor right here. So you can use that formula with these numbers here to work out this. Remember, Q, of course, is just 1 minus P. Now, those you're going to figure out just using some basic calculations on your calculator, plugging in the formulas. But these last four things we are going to do from our from our um, program and we're going to use our HGOCDF program on the TI-84 or if you've got the TI-Inspire TI the functions HGOPDF and HGOCDF. So what we're going to have you do is, is pause each time that we come to a line, work through the details of working all these out. When you think you've got all your answers, come back to this video We'll check your answers, and then we'll move on to the next example. So go ahead and work this first one out now. Pause, please. All right, so if you have the Inspire, this is what it looks like and for solving this. So uh, the, the probability of a success on the first trial is M divided by N, uh, capital M divided by capital N. So 160 divided by 200, that's 0.8 there. To find the mean, we just multiply the 12 times the 0.8, which you see I've done here in the calculator is 9.6. Now the standard deviation was a little bit harder, but we have the formula, so we just plug in. So it's 200 minus 12, population size minus sample size, over population size minus 1. times n, which is 12, times p, which is 0.2, times q. Well, q is 1 minus p, so if p is 0.8, q is 0.2. Do all those things right there, and then take the square root of the whole thing, 
and you get about 1.34800. to five decimal places. Notice one, two, three, four. The fifth decimal place is a nine. The next one over is an eight. So you drop all that. Uh, next, next one's another nine. So you add to that nine, one. It, it makes a zero there. That adds one. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So this There's missing, there's missing a six there, isn't there? Okay, let me fix that typo. Okay, there we go. That's better. 1.346. Then now you got 7996. Well, that six is bigger than five, five or bigger. So you add, drop all that, add one to the nine, makes that a zero, 10, carry one. One to the nine makes another zero, carry one, that makes that a eight. So that's rounding off there. Now, those are just, just straightforward calculations there. Now, what about these? These calculations are going to make use of our functions that we have programmed in. So when you find the probability that x equals a number, that's what a PDF does. So we do we type in H G O P D F and just type in. Now actually, let me show you. There's two ways to get this. Once you have the function in there, you can actually just type it in H G O. PDF and then go from there okay another way you can get it is from the catalog I believe so we hit this thing that looks like a book and we go to no you don't go to the book what you go to is variables you hit variables and then you see these functions. So this tells us it's a function and we want the PDF. So HGO PDF <clears throat> and this example was 200 here for the population size and then it was 160 for the number of successes in the population we did a sample size of 12, and we want the population of x actually equals 5, and then enter. There it is exactly. We don't care about that. Control enter will approximate that, and so there it is approximately. Okay, in a similar way, you can put in HGO CDF. So that, and the order goes in uh, population size, number of successes in the population, sample size, and then lower and, whoops, lower and upper here limits on the uh, uh, X values. And again, it'll give an exact value, but also a decimal if you do control enter. So eventually I got to where I finally just did control enter here and skipped over the fraction versions because that's maybe that's exact, but it's not really particularly as useful as the decimal in this case. And so we figured all these out. Now, the CDF again tells it between the two values. So if you want to find the probably less than six, you're going from actually from zero to five. So notice I went from zero to five here and got the probability. Greater than nine would be from 10 up to the top, which is 12. So 10 to 12 here would be this probability. Between 3 and 7, that's sort of obvious. It tells you the 3 and the 7 there. Now, if you have a TI-84, then it's slightly different the way you work it, but it's basically the same. Actually, this first part works out almost identical uh, for finding the, the uh, P, the Mu, and the Sigma. You can look at that screen and put that in. But to do, the, do this other part, let's see, let me go ahead and pull up a calculator here. And let's run, let's do this. So I'll at least do one of them. So you run the program HGOCDF. Even though it's a PDF, this works too. Let me show you how this works. So we want to go from sample size or population size to 200. 160 successes in the population. 
sample size of 12. The lower limit is, well, we're finding the probability that x equals 5. So we just, lower limit is 5, upper limit is 5. And so that gives us this number right here. And you do the same thing for the others. And every time the S is 200, the M is 160, the N is 12, what you just keep changing is L and U. So for less than 6, we're just going from, uh, let's see, here it is, from 0 to 5. And you here see the probability there. For greater than 9, we're going from 10 up to the sample size is 12. And for between 3 and 7, we're just going from 3 to 7 because they're both included. And you see those same probabilities. Now, isn't that slick? That is so cool, that program. It just it will figure all this stuff out for you, which would take many, 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 many um, steps to do um, without the program or without, especially without a calculator at all. And yet, yeah, it works this out very nicely and very quickly. All right, here's another example. Now that you've seen that one, you should be able to knock this one out pretty quickly on your own. So I just changed the value of n, m, and n. Okay, and work this out. Press pause, come back when you have an answer. Okay, here are the answer. Uh, from here on out, I'm going to alternate between doing one with the Inspire and then one with the TI-84. But here are the answers that should check with what you have. Okay, next problem. Try this one. Press pause now. All right, you're back. Hopefully your answers check out with this. And here are the screenshots for the TI-84 way of doing it. Next one. Do this one, press pause, Be press pause anywhere in here that you need to, to double check your answers, rework things, uh, whatever you need to do. But you need to practice these yourselves uh, so that you can get really good at this stuff before we move on. So practice this one and come up with the answers, see what you get. Press pause now. Here are the answers and the screenshots from the TI Inspire. And here's another one. Work this one out. Press pause now. All right, you're back. Here's the answers and the screenshots from the TI-84. Try another one. Here's another one. Work it out. Press pause. Okay, hopefully you've been actually pressing pause and working these out yourselves. Now let's check our answers. Here they are and the screenshots from the Inspire. I think that completes the examples that I shared with you earlier. So there's the full table for the examples with everything, uh, everything worked out. Okay, so that completes this video on using the hypergeometric program or functions that we've put into our Texas Instruments calculators. And uh, we're going to use some of this uh, throughout the rest of the semester. Uh, we're going to assume that you have these uh, available to you, just like now that you have the built-in uh, PDF and CDF for geometric and binomial distributions as well.